everybody, Dr. Lena here, and today I'm going to teach you the most effective stretch for your lower back, your hamstrings, and even your calves. And the reason that this is also amazing is that you can do it at your desk, you can do it standing, if you have a standing desk, all that you need is a chair. We're going to start off just by using the back of the chair. So I'll show you how to do this in a more advanced way if you're more flexible and near the end of the video. But today I would use a higher surface to help balance yourself. And all that we're gonna do is we're gonna take your hands on the back of the chair and we're gonna take your feet, probably about two or three feet away from the chair depending on how tall you are, of course, and we're gonna point your feet forward right under your hips. So you want to try to get your feet in proper alignment so that the edges of your feet, the outside of your feet, are lined up in parallel. So you might actually even feel a little bit pigeon-toed when you do it this way, but give it a shot. And of course, if that's uncomfortable, just take your feet a little bit further out. But ideally, we want your toes pointed forward. So we're going to have our toes pointed forward, the outside of our feet parallel with our hips and our knees really stacked. And then all that we're going to do as we're holding on here, just for some balance, is we're going to focus on the area under our big toe, our baby toe, and our heel. So we're going to have those three points really sink into the ground and ground ourselves on that triangle on the bottom of our foot, because all those points are going to stay on the ground for the duration of the whole exercise. Then from there, what we're going to do is that we're just going to start to shift our weight back into our heels. So as we shift our weight back to our heels, again, I'm just using this front as support. You can see that my knees are soft as I'm allowing my sits bones to guide my weight backwards towards the back wall as I shift the weight into my heels. So I'm not allowing my knees to overly straighten. I'm not sitting down low. I'm just allowing my knees to be soft and bent as I take my tailbone back to the back wall as if someone's pulling my sits bones backwards. At the same time, you can see I'm keeping my spine very, very straight, as if there's a rope going out the top of my head and out my tailbone, and someone's pulling it longer and longer and longer. So I'm reaching my head forward as I'm taking my tailbone back. So you may feel this stretch in the lower back. You may feel it in the hamstrings and the calves. You're gonna feel it in whatever area of what we call the posterior chain is tightest from sitting all day. So all that you're going to do, keeping your shoulders nice and relaxed, so make sure they're not scrunching up to your ears, is hold this stretch for about three or four deep breaths, allowing things just to relax, and then coming back up. There are a few ways that you can make this stretch even deeper or that you can feel it in a different place. One of the most common ones, if you're more flexible, is to use a lower surface. So if I flip my chair around and I use the surface of my chair, now when I keep my knees soft and my shoulders relaxed and I start to take my hips backwards, you can see I'm still keeping my spine in proper alignment, but I can get a much deeper stretch as I allow my knees to soften even more and I take my tailbone back even further towards the back wall. So this is not a good option for you if you find yourself rounding a little bit when you do this stretch or you want to pick your toes up. We really want to make sure that we can keep that whole foot flat on the ground as we reach our tailbone back and reach our head forward. Another great option for this stretch, especially if you have pain in through the hips or in through the glutes, is to actually swing yourself slightly side to side as you're doing the stretch. Once you pull your pelvis backwards towards the back wall, we're not actually, not actually just going to go side to side. We're going to go a little bit more on a diagonal. So if you were a clock, you're sort of going to go to 4 o'clock and then to 8 o'clock. So we're just going to go from side to side on a diagonal. So in other words, you're going to take your feet in parallel again, knees under the hips. You're going to take, you're going to take your tailbone right back. And then from here, I'm just going to take my right hip back a little bit and my left hip back a bit. So it's always really, really good to get some motion into stretches, not always just to do them statically. So you can see that all I'm doing is I'm taking my right hip back to the back corner of the room and my left hip back to the back corner of the room. Also a great option to add to the stretch. Another great option for the stretch to get a deeper stretch and feel the stretch in the different areas is to do it with wider legs. 
So all that you're going to do at that point is just the same way that we take our toes pointed forward and we parallel the outside edges of our feet if we can and hold on to something. You might need to take a little bit of a step backwards if you're tall like me. And then take that tailbone way, 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 way back. And you can feel much, sometimes a much deeper stretch in through the back of the hamstrings or even in the inner thighs. When you do this stretch with your legs wide, again, keeping your spine nice and straight as someone's pulling my sits bones back and my head forward, keeping my shoulders relaxed. There's a few things that you want to avoid when you're doing the lengthener. So the first most common one is to lift your toes. So as I have you shift your weight back into your heels, that doesn't mean I want the front of your foot to lift off the ground. Keep that area under the big toe and the baby toe sunken into the ground even as we shift our weight backwards. We really want that whole foot to remain planted. As well when we do the lengthener, some people have a tendency to want to pull their tailbone back and really hyperextend their knees. So we want to keep your knees soft. And you may even find that as you go backwards, your knees bend more and more and more as your tailbone's going backwards. So it's not that I'm bending my knees forward and they're coming over my toes, but that as I'm leading with my sits bones backwards as I'm doing the stretch, naturally my knees will have more bend in them. Another great variation for the stretch is to get some mobility and some rocking going as you're doing this stretch. As you get into the lengthener, rather than just hold it statically, what we'll have you do is we'll have you come forward, weight into your toes, and then allow your hips to sink back. So as I'm coming up and back, I'm actually leading with my hips. You can see my knees are staying very, very soft, and my hips are just coming up, and then they're rocking back. So this is a great way to start this stretch before you decide to hold it for a static hold. So just to rock it back and forth five or 10 times before you get into a very static hold. Again, my pelvis is leading the way as opposed to bending my knees. I'm gonna link two other videos below. So once you master this technique, you'll be able to then move on to our more advanced standing low back stretching series and standing low back strengthening series, which I will link below in the description. I really hope you got a lot out of this video. And if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you press like. If you have any questions about anything at all, please put them in the comments and have a wonderful day.